Hello guys and welcome back for a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King on the beautiful map Forts of Eisen and on the right side we have the White Eisen Guards player, the White Hand, Mr. Piggy and his opponent on the left side is the Purple Motor player, Cloud. The patch is 2.02 version 8.3. Two furnaces are coming up for the Eisen Guards player on the right side and we have a slaughterhouse into the first orc pit already coming up for the Motor player, Cloud. And it looks like he's even going for the second orc pit. That's quite interesting because that's something we don't see that quite often. Eye of Sauron will be used from Cloud to scout his opponent. He will be able to see the third furnace coming up. He also sees the Uruk pit building up. And that's actually a great start into the game for Cloud. Why? Because the Uruk pit is super delayed. And this way Cloud can't get punished because of that start. If for example Mr. Piggy would make two furnaces into the Uruk pit instead and get a Urukai really fast on the field and potentially take down the slaughterhouse, this start would be a terrible idea from Cloud. But because of the third furnace, Cloud should be good to go. The first Orc warriors joining the fight, uh, we're gonna have a lot of Orc spam early on. Two slaughterhouses still, I think he's saving the money for the third one in the back. At the same time, Eye of Sauron is still being active. He was able to see both the builders, he knows that he has three furnaces and he knows that he has a Uruk pit up on the field. The builder from Mr. Piggy is building another furnace here, at the top right side. And the first Orc warrior is coming and uh, getting on the side from Mr. Piggy. The Urukai should be on the field, now it's gonna be interesting to see if he's gonna move forward and try to deal some damage or if he's gonna try to defend himself. And... Ah, it looks like he wanna defend himself, which is kinda um, unfortunate, I would say. I mean, he has actually no other choice, because the second unit are those pikemen. And if you try to defend yourself with pikemen against orcs, you will still win the game. Why? Because orc warriors are the weakest units in the game. But you will lose a lot, you will lose a lot of health, and it's not worth it. Orcs, they cost only 80 each, and the pikemen, they cost 400 each. So... If he manages to take down a couple of your pikemen, it's totally worth for the mortal player. And that's a win-win situation for Cloud. I like the movement here, he's actually just looking around and making those Urukai chase him, just killing some time. And he's now gonna commit to that furnace here and might be able to take it down. He also keeps the builder busy, that's really impactful by the way, as he was able to see the second builder as well. Uh, he knows there is a builder, there is a builder, he knows that Isengard player is not expanding at the same time. And yes, this furnace is gonna be taken down. Crossbowmen are on the field for defensive purposes, face tanking those orcs, which is not a great choice. Again, orcs are very weak, you will still be able to take them down, but again, you will lose a couple of your units. Uh, it's not a big deal though, because orcs are pretty much getting one-shotted here. But waves for waves, like in the mission of BFME 1, <laughs> the Black Gate, we see a lot of orcs joining the battlefield. Um, he was also building a Haradrim palace in the meantime and even upgrading that para uh, Haradrim palace to level 2. I think he's gonna save now for the Haradrim lancers. Two orc pits, both of them are still level 1. Power point wise, Cloud was able to collect almost two power points for himself. Uh, trying to take down this furnace. Uh, actually, he was also trying to take down this furnace, but it looks like Isengard player will be able for now. To defend both of these. But at least he was keeping Isengard's player busy. He has 350 command points, wasn't expand, um, you know, expanding that well during the pushes. Again, nearly two power points collected for the modern player Cloud. On the other side, we have 450 command points. Where are the command points coming from? Ah, uh, okay, he has two furnaces here, but unfortunately, we are not able to see that furnace in the minimap. We see only the builder in this furnace here. Uh, Isengard player was, by the way, guys, able to creep this work layer at the right side of the river. Now creeping the troll layer at the top right side as well. He has almost three power points collected. Decent amount of resources still. Um, might go for the Sharku or for the Lords. Let's see. Oh, Lancers are coming and he has no pikemen around. Warchant, by the way, is still unused from Mr. Piggy. The builder here from him has to be careful as well. But nice trample here. He was able to take down an entire battalion, and not only that, but he was also forcing his opponent to use the war chant. Builder was able to get away, but again, he keeps the builder busy all the time. And the first push from Mr. Piggy is all about to happen. 
but those units they're gonna run straight into those uh, Haradrim Lancers and they won't be able to do anything. Nice trample. Urukai, they are not getting one shotted as you know. They are quite tanky. And also really important to mention the Haradrim Lancers are not the strongest cavalry in the game as well. More orcs are coming for now. He was by the way able to take down this furnace here. This furnace is still up on the field but it's super low. If he loses that one he would lose every single of the three starting furnaces and yes he is going to end up losing that one. On the bright side he has almost six power points collected and he was also able to kill a lot of these lancers. They are still level one only so they won't be recovering over time as you know. Warchan is still being active on those units and they should be easily able to deal with those orcs. Six power points collected. He can now choose to go for the for the Kribane, which is not only gonna debuff the enemy units, but also nullify their leadership, which is a perfect counter to this Eye of Sauron. 400 command points for the Mordor player, 400 command points for the Isengard player, Mr. Figgy. He gets more Lancers on the field. Besides that, the Furnace is here around, uh, still on the field. He has three Furnaces here, which are pretty much undamaged all game long so far. He's getting 150 command points from these three. Uh, and moving for a counter attack here. Yes, Warchan still on cooldown if I'm not mistaken, but Eye of Sauron is actually available for the cloud. And he's also really close to get the five power points, which he might invest either on the on the Tainted Land or on the Warchant. Or what he can always do, obviously, as you know, save until you have 10 power points and get the industry power spike, which is gonna help Mordor out a lot. Eye of Sauron being used. But the Kribane will be used to counter that. The leadership is getting completely negated. And it looks like Mordor player will be forced to retreat. Again, those units from Isengard are not buffed. They don't have Warchant. But we know the fact that Isengard units, Urukai and Crossbowmen, are stronger than Orcs and um, the Orc Archers. There's also Pikemen to protect those units. Sharku is also on the field, level 2 already. In the meantime, there's a slaughterhouse right next to the furnace. <laughs> so in this case, Mordor player is actually able to see this furnace. And he might be able to take it down later on. And he went for the Warchant, by the way. He was also using Warchant on those units. So it's buff against no buff. And the Kribane is gonna be gone soon. He needs to move these cave beds, by the way. In order to keep the uh, debuff active. Alright. It might be a bad fight to take. Risky trample. It looks like he will be able to get away. Sharko is still on the field, but there are some Easterlings around, so he needs to be careful here. And because of the buff advantage, and now Isengard was using buff as well, which is kind of questionable. Why? Because he lost so many units already. I think those units, they won't make any difference. Sharko, by the way, got damaged so much from these three Easterlings and was able to get away with literally one HP. <laughs> but a huge victory here for the model player Cloud. Now he can also secure this creep at the top left side for himself. And building a troll cage, by the way, offensively. That's interesting. 500 command points for the model player. And really important to mention, those three slaughterhouses from the beginning of the game are still untouched. That's massive, as they hit all three of them level 2. Unlike the furnaces from Isengard player Mr. Piggy, they are only level 1. Level 2 slaughterhouse gives you more resources and has more stats, like harder to take down and increases your command points also by 75 instead of a, uh, instead of 50 what a level 1 farm does. Like a furnace, farm, you know, a slaughterhouse or whatsoever. Okay, 525, his command points kept. That's the reason why he can't get those uh, get this mountain troll up on the field. There is still one furnace here. He, Isengard player for some reason didn't capture this in, which is... I think it's a, it's a great thing when you capture this one as Isengard because then you will be able to make those black orcs. They are almost as effective as Urukai, but they cost 150 less. So Urukai they cost 400, and those Black Orcs they cost only 250. He might lose this Troll Cage here, by the way. It's gonna take Sharku, however, a lot of time to take it down. In the meantime, Mordor player is just securing another creep at the left side of the river. He was just able to take down this one. And now he's gonna go for a massive attack. I see a lot of Orc Warriors, Orc Archers on the field. Um, I think he's just waiting for the mountain troll to join the battlefield and then he will just demolish that. That's what I guess is gonna happen. We have a fight here in the middle. Warchan is still on cooldown for both the players, but he has now enough for the Tainted Land. Yes, that's gonna be his choice. Kribin was used to debuff the enemy units and nullify the leadership they are gaining from the Eye of Sauron. That's a massive 
Orc Archer Army right there. And they are buff from the Tainted Land. And Urukai and Crossbowmen aren't. But Lourdes is level 2. Drawing the sword and diving in. We'll be using the Carnage ability. We know Lourdes is hitting like an absolute truck, by the way. And he's gonna deal so much damage, boys. Look how much damage he's able to deal here. That is crazy. Sharko, in the meantime, was able to take down the troll cage. But Mordor player Cloud was indeed able to get one of these uh, mountain trolls on the field. Radran Palace is still only level 2, not upgraded to level 3 just yet. 4 power points collected by Cloud, 675 command points available. Um, on the other side, for the Isengard player, he has 8.5 power points collected. Um, he doesn't have that much resource income, but he's very close for the Devastation power spike. You need 10 power points for that, as you know. And once you have 10 power points, you can, you know, get a decent amount of resource income from time to time. You know, actually, Devastation is very effective. Gives you really a great chunk of money at the same time you are using that. So it's nothing like a Field of Fire or, you know, Scavenger or Industry. Those those abilities, they need time to give you money. But uh, Devastation is going to give you instant money. So you can, for example, in invest the money you are gaining for the Lords, for Saruman potentially, for Grima, aka Wormtongue. <laughs> so you have many, many possibilities with your devastation if you use it correctly and devastation can also be used on the on the enemy ends when you are playing against elves deals great amount of damage to them as well all right mori is moving for our attack he has still this mountain troll alive he can always eat a orc and heal up to full health lords is level three and level five is gonna be the time for lords to shine as you know he's gonna unlock his leadership in those Isengard units, they will be even much more powerful after that. Mordor, however, right now doesn't have a way to negate the enemy leadership. Only uh, Mouth of Sauron can do that with level 4 or the Witch King, but he is not close to that at this point. 10 power points collected from the Isengard player now. I think he's gonna go for the Devastation. I might be wrong as well. 500 command points. Uh, oh, nice hit with Sharku here, by the way. Sharku is running for his life. Oh, Lancers, they were just able to get away. There's still many, many orc archers, but Isengard units are just stronger, and they will be able to win that fight. Charku doing a great job against this troll, chasing him down all the time. He has only one troll, because, right, remember, right, Charku was able to destroy the troll cage right after this mountain troll arrived on the field. Yes, he was able to destroy the furnace here, but I think he's gonna be taken down. Isengard was able to win the fight, and Lourdes is almost level 4. Devastation was picked, and let's take a look into that. He has around 1,200 resources now. And the second he's using that, he's gonna get a great chunk of money. But he's holding it for now. He needs to use it as fast as possible, because those kind of abilities from your spellbook, you wanna get them on cooldown really fast, so it's gonna be available sooner, if this makes sense. Sharku is level 5. Lourdes is almost level 4. Two Urk pits up on the field for the Isengard player Mr. Piggy. Uh, two and a half power points collected after Warchan, Creebane and the Devastation. And on the other side, we have 725 command points for Cloud Boys. 725. He has Industry being used on this almost level 3 slaughterhouse in the back. He has even the Gorgorov Spire Fireball. There we go. Beautiful. Troll Cage is building up now. He has a level 2 Orc, uh, Haradrim Palace. Um, two level 1 Orc Pits. And Gorgorov, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to see that one. Troll Cage, I think we're gonna see a lot of uh, Mountain Trolls, potentially Drama Trolls, and even Attack Trolls later on. Isengard keeps winning those fights, because quality is over quantity in this situation, and Lourdes is getting more and more powerful, as he's only one level away from unlocking the leadership, which is gonna make those Isengard units hitting like a truck, being tanky as a truck as well at the same time. <laughs> you can use the Gorgorov Spy Fireball, I think it's not worth to, you know, kind of waste it on those two units. But he might use it now for the reinforcements. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. Obviously, the ability here from the fortress is limited range, so you can't use it from the side to the side. Would be kind of broken if this would be the case. Gorgorov Spire Fireball is incoming, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming, boys. It is coming. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we take those. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, please make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this, guys. It's really helpful. The, help, the likes, they help for the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much in advance. 
All right. Uh, Sharko is pressuring those slaughterhouses now. Um, we have uh, Troll Cage level 2. Drama Troll is on his way for the leadership parts and for the raw ability, which is like a like a fear. Like, you know, uh, Aragorn's LND ability, Screech ability from the Felbies. Actually, when I think about it, Mord has so many ways to fear the enemy units. And we have a White Wizard joining the fight, boys. His name is Saruman. Now he's against his own master, Sauron. Can he do that? The furnace here will be taken down potentially. I mean, the army based... I mean, army from Clouds, the model players, mainly based on those orc archers for now. They are quite strong in terms of... Uh, oh, Muma kill pan. Okay. Nice. Oh, uh, I give you some entertainment here, boys. Okay, Sauron is dangerous, by the way. Actually, he was using the wizard plus. I think he was not killing any units. He wasn't able to get any kind of experience here. Still sitting on level 1. Uh, Lourdes is almost level 5. Sharku pressuring again uh, all the time. Keeping those Easterlings kind of busy. And Muma kill. They cost 1600 each. They cost way more than some heroes. Like Arvin, Eomir, Theodin, Eovin. Those heroes, they cost much less than a Muma kill. And it's been a long time, my friends. Since I was able to see a Muma kill. I'm excited how effective this is going to be. It's kind of risky, not gonna lie. Why? Because, you know, the Lords is very close to hit level 5. So he will have the leadership, he will have the buff from the War Chant, he will have Fireball on the Saruman, right? So he has many, many uh, units with enough buffs and leadership to actually burst a Mumma kill down. That's what I'm assuming. But they might also make a work. The Dramatol has been taken down, but another one is coming from the backside. Wizard Plus is available. The Saruman should go for a crazy play here. Could get a. And I think when you use a wizard plus, you don't want to use it in the front. You want to click like a, like a unit here in the back to actually de get the maximum value. Nice dodge here from Clouds. Not many units died. And at the end of the day, they are only orc archers. So you don't get too many, too many power points and experience for your heroes from killing them. Indeed, we have still 675 command points available. Gorgoroth's Spy Fireball is loading. It's almost halfway up. More drama trolls are joining the fight. And Muma kill is here ladies and gentlemen there we go by the way guys the world championship for you know for the rise of the witch king with a cash price of 500 dollars is gonna begin soon it's gonna be live streamed on our twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards the link for that in the video description below i would really appreciate you guys if you take a look into the channel and join one of the live streams all right muma kill drama trolls everyone is in the business Mordo has such a great resource income as well Isengard has now 600. Okay, charge attack was used. Did Saruman die? No, no, no. Saruman is here. Okay, I was worried for a second because the Saruman didn't do anything after he came out from the fortress. It's always kind of waste, waste of money. This is like a high risk, high rewards hero from Rise of the Witch King, right? So if you make a crazy play like this one, this one was a great wizard plus. He's worth every single penny. But if you lose him the second he comes out, he's also kind of waste of money. Just imagine like a, like a Gandalf or... You know, like a Gimli, Legolas, Witch Kings, as they are two, from Engma 1 and from Mordor 1. If they are not able to do anything, they're kind of useless and kind of waste of money. Um, Isengard has also now some level 2 furnaces here. Level 2, level almost 3 in the back. 14 power points collected. Uh, 675 command points available. Charku is almost level 6. Lourdes is still not level 5. Cripple right click, by the way. That's gonna auto cast the Cripple ability will uh, do it on the enemy heroes once he sees them but there are no heroes to cripple down just yet for the murder player he is actually playing the game without heroes but he is playing the game with muma kills instead and they are somewhat heroes they can be even much more impactful than heroes in some certain situations but for now the first one wasn't that effective the thing is they are so expensive if you lose them you're gonna give your opponents a lot of experience points and power points as well so if, for example, uh, once Lourdes is level 8 with the pillage ability, right, and he kills the Muma kill, I think he's gonna get a lot of cash. How much exactly, I don't know. We might be able to figure out later. 725 command points for Isengard's player. Nearly five, uh, 15 power points collected, sorry. Saruman is going for a Wizard Blast. Can he do it? Roar ability will be used. Nice dodge here from Cloud, pressing X on his, on his keyboard to make the units split in different directions. 
Zaplast, I mean Fireball was used, he's running for his life now, the first hero from the Mordor player is joining the fight and his name is Mouth of Sauron. Lurt is here doing actually nothing, he's still not level 5 boys, he's really close though. Okay, he wanted to use the Wizard Blast but cancelling that, he's taking way too much damage, has to run for his life. Charge attack is incoming and Muma kill actually such a, such a really, actually very hard to take down. I think he might force the Isengard's player to go for the Armory and to purchase the Fire Arrow upgrade for those crossbow men. Because Fire Arrow is actually very effective as you know against Muma kills. Okay, Mouth of Sauron got crippled down. You can just use the swords now, go in close range and then, you know, take him down with your Carnage ability. But it looks like he doesn't want to do that. Pikemen are getting knocked down all the time from these drama trolls there too. And it looks like Mouth of Sauron might actually be able to get away here. He has so many drama trolls, that's crazy. And I think, you know, it's not even bad. Think about it. If you have more than one, two, even three. Okay, Mouth of Sauron has been still taken down. And this drama troll is down, this... Drama Troll is going to be taken down as well. And Freezing Rain. Like a global debuff. Nullifying enemy leadership and then debuffing them. That can be crazy. All over the map, boys. All over the map. Awaken Worm is going to be ready for the motor player. And now we have a level 2 Orc Pit. Orc Pit, he has now two of these. And going to make a lot of these Orc, uh, Black Orc Warriors. The Troll Cage is level 2 still. I like to see those Memo Kills. But I would also love to see some of those attack trolls joining the fight. Like, a, like you know, make a make an army based on those yeah, big monsters dog. of... Ooh, Gorgoros Fire Fireball, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Holy moly, that's dope. He killed everything. Oh, I love to see that two times in a row, boys. Okay, nice dodge. He's paying attention. Doesn't want to give too many power points and too much experience, especially for the Saruman. Because once he's level uh, 6, the Thunderbolt, you know, he has Wizard Blast, Fireball and Thunderbolt, this guy is a one-man army. And then once he's level 10, the Dominate, permanently gain control of targeted enemies. Imagine you are using that on the enemy Muma kill. <laughs> that would be crazy. Okay, Tintland is available, all the other power points are on cooldown. Nice Fireball here. Lurz is finally level 5. Sharku is level 6, by the way. Level uh, 7 will be unlocking his man eater, That's can, that gives him such a big sustain, he can heal up to full health in a second. Uh, but Mordo lost a couple of these uh, slaughterhouses and now the Gorgoroth Spire Fireball is gonna be on cooldown for a while. And I feel like Isengard's player has to use that one for his advantage. By the way, while I was talking, Worm was used from the Mordo player. And he was using I first, why? Because you can't use summons in, a, in the Shroud. So you need to reveal the shroud first to be able to use any summons. That's why he was using I to scout to reveal the shroud. Then he was using the worm. Mordor is going for a counter attack. One Muma kill. I think Cloud should really try. I think it's easier said than done. But he should really try to get, uh, to get actually an uh, attack off with like two potentially even three Muma kills at the same time. Again, it's easier said than done. Why? Because Muma kills, they are not only very expensive in terms of cost, but also they cost 70 command points each. And Mordor has only 500, now has 600 command points available. And he needs to make drama trolls, he needs to make a mix, right? He's making black orcs, they also cost uh, 60 command points each. So since he is not, you know, since he doesn't have full command points just yet, he can't afford to do that. I would say, in terms of cost efficiency, Muma kills are very expensive units, but also in terms of command points. Okay, nice trample here. He's very, very strong, by the way. And once he's level 7, he doesn't need to be worried. Oh, barbed arrow shot, not dealing too much damage. Muma kill. I would like to see, like, let's see the Muma kill damage here on the furnace. Okay, like, like, a, like a catapult, right? I mean, he's attacking way, way slower, but I think it's not the power of the Muma kill. He's very tanky, hard to take down, and very scary with the charge attack. Okay, we have some, you know, harassment going on at the top left side. He was actually able to take down this level 3 slaughterhouse in the back. Um, industry is going to be available soon. Losing those Haraldrim arches hurts big time. Mordo has such a great resource income. Has 3,000 resources collected. At any point, he can just get Witch King on the field. It looks like he doesn't. He didn't revive his you know, Mouth of Sauron. Remember, Mouth of Sauron was earlier killed from Lourdes. Or not from Lourdes. But he got crippled from Lourdes. And got killed by the pikemen. Okay. Saruman is level 3.5 boys, Lourdes is level 6.5 and Sharku is almost level 7. We have still 
725 command points. More Muma kills are coming. Drama Troll. Paradram Archers. Black Orcs. The elite units from the Moro faction boys. 725. Again, 700 command points. Rain was used before. Devastation, Warchan, Kribin, and almost 18 power points collected. Saruman is getting also really, you know, close and closer to this uh, Thunderbolt power spike. Muma kill. he has even fire arrow upgrade purchased on these Haradrim archers. They're gonna hit like a truck, as you know. 750 command points now for Isengard. He's going for the armory level 3, and he's definitely gonna purchase those fire arrow upgrade on those crossbar men. He already did that, by the way. That's gonna uh, make their damage output against the Muma kill much more. We're gonna... We're gonna see now how much more. It's an early cave bats. I don't like that one. Because if you use it early like that, the, uh, you know, the archers and the Radram archers, they can automatically... Nice trample. Oh! Oh my god, this, he almost went over this Aramon. It was close. Okay. 20 power points, but he was able to take down the moment kill. He, and on the other side, was able to kill a lot of these uh, crossbow men. They have fire arrow upgrade purchase, but they don't have. Oh, nice one. Sharku, with his attacks... Oh, that's really scary, by the way. Sharku, splash damage, if you grouped against him, he can kill with one hit, multiple units at once. And especially when you have those weak units in terms of defense. Okay, Saruman is getting damaged here, by the way. Man Eater was used, Sharku healing up to full health. There's actually so many drama trolls, that's crazy. I see three, they're gonna die now one by one. And, yeah, um... Isengard is getting really close for that 25 boys, for that 25, and we know we have seen so many games in the tournaments, in the normal games, in the show matches, 25 power point advantage is massive in Rise of the Witch King. It's game changing, even game winning, and Mordo is still far away from that, he needs 11 for that power spike. More Muma kills are coming, Siege Warwick's level 2, he's potentially gonna make some catapults or Black Riders. He's getting more drama trolls. Keep spamming them like crazy, by the way. Just for that fear. But he needs to keep in mind, once Saruman is level 5, even though it doesn't show here, he has, he has a passive. He's gonna give fear resistant to his units. So he's really close. He's one level away from that fear resistant. That's gonna make those drama trolls kinda useless. I mean, they're not gonna become useless because they give leadership as well. But the fear resistant... Fear, I think, is the main reason why Mordor Player Cloud is making them. Or making so many of them at the same time. Okay? Nice. With a plus level 5. That's what I meant. Let's see. You can use Roar. I mean, Roar ability is on cooldown still from both these drama trolls. So it can't be used for now. He's getting more of these on the field though. Um, no upgrade to level 3 just yet. He also didn't make any catapults just yet. He has 900 command points available. The map is kind of split it in two. Half of the side. Half of the map is under control from Isengard's player. And half of the map is under control from the Mordor player for now. Making some lumber mill, you know, lumber mills, just why not? Isengard can do that as well, but he doesn't have a single lumber mill up on the field just yet. 16 and a half power points collected. Sharku is level almost 8. And we have the summon dragon ready, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Gorgoro Fireball is also ready from the Mortal Player Clouds. Okay, the next fight is gonna be absolute fiesta. <laughs> Let's see. I think he's looking for opportunity to use uh, the dragon here. You might use it on top of the enemy units, but I think you want to deal damage to the structures instead. Especially like, you know, when they're lined up like this. So you can kill this level 3 slaughterhouse or level 2 orc pit. There we go, one-shotting almost everything here. Need kind of two shots for this uh, slaughterhouse. You can kill the Muma kill pan. You can kill the troll cage level 2. You can kill her everything here, pretty much, with the summon dragon. Look how much power points he's gaining as well during this time. Oof, nice fireball here with this catapult, man. Okay, uh, Saruman is in between the army, if I'm not mistaken. There is a mountain troll running across the army for some reason. Actually getting a decent damage off. Not being targeted, I think, Mr. Piggy. Gorgoros fire fireball, ladies and gentlemen. One more time. Holy moly. And he's gonna lose this troll cage level 2. I think Dragon has still time. He's gonna lose the level 3 slaughterhouse with the industry buff on it. What a turn, boys. What a turn. Mordor needs still 7 power points, boys. He needs still 7 power points. Luckily, he has still 725 command points. So he has a decent amount of resource income still, even after losing that much. But the thing is, he almost lost every single production building 
beside the siege works here. So he needs to now replace them. That's gonna give Isengard enough time after dealing with the army first. Where is Saruman? Saruman is here, level 5, um, uh, level almost 6. Thunderbolt might be ready soon. This level 2 furnace, almost level 3 furnace will be taken down. Uh, look his money. He can actually save for the Witch King. 19 power points collected. I would say Witch King in a situation like this might not be the greatest call. Maybe make some more units like Haradrim Archers because Isengard is playing the game without um, Warg Riders, right? So that means you can spam those Haradrim Archers on the field. You have multiple of these. They're gonna be very strong as you know. They're potentially stronger than the Crossbowman in a 1v1 situation. They're also really strong against Heroes when you have many of these. Thunderbolt is available, by the way, for the Isengard's player. Now for the Saruman level 6. And again, Drama Trolls, not very very impactful in this situation. Because Saruman is giving you fear resistance with level 5. It's a passive, just like Gandalf. Gandalf does the same. Eye of Sauron is being used for the Worm. I think he's just waiting for the last second. It's gonna be ready now. Can potentially kill those two Orc Pits and the Armory level 3. This Orc Pit is... Uruk Pit is gonna be taken down first. Um, you can also try to take down these level 3 furnaces. I think that's what you want to do. Maybe taking down one le level 1 Uruk Pit is not the way to win the game. You need to try Isengard to get this money he's looking for. Isengard units, they are very expensive. Especially when you upgrade every single one of them. So you need a lot of money to do that. Taking down a level 3 furnace is going to definitely help you out. And the Worm is dealing incredible amount of damage. Look this. Two-shotting a furnace level 3. Mordo has 24 power points collected, boys. The catapult is gonna be taken down after a beautiful shot. Nice one. 25 power points now. He was able to replace the Haradrim Palace level 2. He has now again two Orc Pits up on the field. Troll cages coming up. He has now the Reign of Fire, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Eye of Sauron, though, is still on cooldown, but the Worm is still giving him the vision. Will he use that here? I would say it doesn't make any sense because he killed, the, you know, the major structures here around already. That is only... Oh, Reign of Fire. Okay, he was using it defensively. Oof, nice one. He almost killed the heroes as well. He killed... He was using it for a defensive... For a defense, which makes sense. Again, the Worm was doing the work. He killed all three Uruk Pits. He killed the level three Furnaces. Two of them. So it's not bad at all. And he has so many ways now to defend himself. God of God of Spire Firewall is gonna be ready soon as well. That's crazy. I think that's... That's like a... Like a good call in this case from Cloud to invest the money into that one because he defended like three attacks with this ability on me and it's super hard. It's hitting super hard by the way on the enemy units. All right, uh, 675. He was able to take down the siege works from the Mordor player Cloud. Cloud has still a decent amount of money and we have now another one. This time it's the Dragon Strike, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the best Dragon Strike I've seen in my life. He killed like two structures, damaged the fortress a bit. Fortress didn't have any expansions to kill. Because he didn't have vision. I think that was the problem. Okay, Kribin was used. The Thunderbolt ability is available. And uh, Fireball, you know, he has everything available pretty much. Lord is level 8. Pillage ability is gonna be very impactful. He stopped making Muma kills because, let's be honest, they didn't do much in this matchup. I think they were just too late. Um... We didn't see any heroes, I mean, he only went for Maupau Sauron once, uh, he lost him pretty much the second he came out to the cripple from Lourdes, and then he didn't even revive him, and also didn't make any other heroes all game long, and I think heroes are very impactful, and Thunderbolt was used on the fortress, dealt almost zero damage, guys, not gonna lie. Okay, Lourdes might die here, it's very low. That commitment is kinda a mistake, because this army should not be enough to take it down, that is... Technically nothing left anymore. Okay. Lourdes has been taken down. Saruman might go down as well. He's quite healthy still. He can get away. That's kind of a lot of, you know... Hmm. He was also having the Gatewatch expansion. Saruman wasn't close enough to the units to give them fear resistance. So fear resistance is kind of, in Rise of the Witch King, a big deal. There are some structures like a statue, for example, from the Men of the West, Elves. You know, they give you also fear resistance. When your units are level 5 or higher, they will automatically have fear resistant. And when you have heroes like Saruman, Gunzal, passively level 5, they will give you fear resistant. And then you have also this active fear resistant leadership from heroes like Gothmog, once he's level 5, with the, with the you know, Iron Hand, I think it's called, right? 
Then you have the stubborn pride uh, from, you know, King Dean. He gives you with level 2 fear resistant. Because fear resistant is actually very important and very impactful in Rise of the Witch King. Why? Because it stuns every unit when they are not level 5 for like a long duration. Imagine like a cloud break, right? It's, it can change the outcome of the fight, or the, you know, the outcome of the game. So in a massive endgame battle, like a Infinity Wars endgame kind of thing, you use that and then what? <laughs> you know, you can stun them for like 10 seconds. It feels like a minute, pretty much. It feels really long. Then you have so much time. Especially when you combine that stunning ability like a Cloud Break with powerful heroes like Gandalf and his Wizard Blast, or Saruman and his Fireball, Thunderbolt, Dominate, Wizard Blast. You know. Okay. Mordor has now almost 9 power points collected, has a lot of cash, and has actually the upper hand. I think there was a mistake from Isengard to commit to that fight, and the Worm was doing such a great job so far from the Mordor player. He was summoned twice already, and every time he dealt such an incredible damage to the Eco, but also to the production buildings from the Isengard player, Mr. Piggy. But Mr. Piggy has still upgraded units on the field. They are very tanky. He has Saruman on the field with the fear resistance. I mean, he has Trollkitch up on the field, but he didn't go for the upgrade this time. Trying to pressure a bit from this side as, as well, but won't be able... Might be able to take it down. I mean, Urukai with Blades, they are quite strong as we know. Even Trolls gonna need a lot of time to take them down. Look, they are not getting one-shotted, but they are getting knocked down. This way, they are not able to attack. Okay, he was forcing the Mordor play in a corner. Will be able to win that fight, obviously. There is nothing Mordor player can do about. In a situation like this, I think Mordor can't win the all-out fights anymore. You know, army against army, that's gonna be almost impossible. Unless you're gonna have a lot of catapults in your backside to deal damage. Oh, he was using this... Uh, wait a second. He was using uh, the Untamed Allegiance on this uh, troll cage. That's gonna increase the production uh, timing by 75%. Look, these trolls are coming like crazy now. Look how fast they are building. <laughs> that's so funny, boys. That's so funny. Okay. A massive army is moving forward. You know, pikemen with full upgrades, crossbowmen with fire arrow upgrades purchased. We have four trolls moving through the middle. And trolls, you don't want to underestimate them. He has a couple of expansions around. I think he, is, he was able to see them coming. Because if five or six trolls can make it to your fortress, they might also be able to take it down. At least they will be able to take down this level 3 furnace for sure, I think. It's gonna take them a bit of time, but trolls are, you know, basically... Uh, siege weapons. Okay. Oh, I missed that one. There was another Gorgoro fireball, by the way, boys, from <laughs> Cloud. I think Mr. Piggy is kind of pissed at this moment. He isn't happy about the situation. Whenever he gets ready to move, whenever he collects enough units to go for a big push, he gets countered so hard, so incredibly hard from this Gorgoro fire spy fall, fireball. And if this isn't ready, he was also using the Rain of Fire ones. So, you know, I think the main problem here in this situation for Isengard player Mr. Piggy is that he needs so much time to actually regroup and reorganize his army, be ready for a big push, that by the time either Rain of Fire or potentially the Gorgoroth Spire Fireball is gonna be ready again. You know, that's really, really unfortunate for Mr. Piggy. He has three Uruk pits, but let me tell you that much. The worm is gonna be ready soon as well. And I think that's gonna be like a, like a, the same situation. It, it will be used, right? Summoned. And then he's gonna lose all the production buildings. And Mordor will have again so much time to work with. And this mountain troll is just doing his thing. He's destroying some of these furnaces. Isengard player has now only uh, 550 command points. That's really low, by the way. The fire is still on the ground. But the MVP, guys, let me know in the comment section below. I think the MVP of this game is definitely the Gorgorov Spire Fireball, boys. <laughs> okay, Thunderbolt is available. I mean, Saruman is almost level 10. But the problem is, I think there is not a strong unit to use the Dominate on. You don't want to use Dominate on, like, Orc Archers or Orc Warriors or Easterlings, you know? You don't want that. I think if you have, like, Dominate by the time Mumma kills were around and you use it on a Mumma kill, that would be very effective, as you know. Okay, this level 3 furnace is going to be taken down as well. Look, those trolls are doing a great job. 
Okay, two furnaces are down once again. The worm is almost ready, by the way, boys. Almost. You can, you know, just look around with this troll for the vision. It's pretty much up in five seconds. Okay, on the other side, we have to summon dragon almost back up for the Isengard player, Mr. Piggy. He needs to go for like a, like a, I think in a situation like this, he's gonna run out of money soon. Yeah, he has devastation in industry, but he keeps losing those furnaces. I think fuel the fires could be a great choice. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. You know, make some lumber mills, make fuel the fires to increase the resource income from these lumber mills. And then you should be, you should be again, actually, maybe good to go. And yeah, the worm is doing a great job again. Two Uruk pits are taken down already. Isengard keeps up the pressure. Summon Dragon is gonna be ready soon. I mean, he has upgrades on the on the fortress that's gonna make it tankier and harder to take down. This army is not gonna be enough to take it down. Never. And he has also expansions around, by the way, boys. He has a Gatewatch expansion here. He has enough of these um, barricade expansions. And the Dragon is coming. Okay, the Dragon can actually help to clean every single of these expansions easily. He has still units around. That might be a great push to win the game. And Isengard has only 350 command points available. He's command points kept. Yes, he has still a decent amount of resources. Saruman is healing up, by the way. Troll Cage has been taken down after he was using the unteamed allegiance. He could also use it here at the bottom left side, by the way. This troll at the bottom left side is still around. So you can use it also on a neutral creep like this. You pretty much get the control of this creep. You can use it on the troll layer, work layer, white layer, dragon layer, on it. You know, goblin layer if you want to. Okay, Dragon is killing the expansions. 350 command points only for Isengard, but he has enough money to actually rebuild what he lost. He needs to do that now. Yes, builders doing here nothing. On the other side, we have um, only 425 command points for Cloud, but Cloud hasn't any units on the field anymore. And he actually is all about to loss, uh, lose this uh, fortress here you know, to Mr. Piggy. What a game, boys. What a game. I think uh, Reign of Fire was kind of a mistake to be used. Untamed Allegiance was a mistake as well, I feel like. Um, you know, it wouldn't be a mistake if he would use it on the Troll Cage at the bottom left side. You know, he could make units from this area. What he did in the previous two minutes was the way to win the game. Because, oh, okay, he has this one, the Magma. <laughs> Killing all the units around. And fear, oh, that's really annoying to deal with, right? And there is not much left anymore. They might be screwed here, they might die. Let's see. I mean, those Gatewatch expansions, they won't do anything if Saruman is close by. Uh, Mordor has nothing left. He has not a single production building anymore. He has one level 3 slaughterhouse and one lumber mill. And never mind, he has two uh, slaughterhouses also here. So it's not like Mordor has no money. Okay, Lava one more time. And look at this. That's like the perfect defense if you want to deal with the melee attackers. So, I think this upgrade on the fortress makes it almost impossible to get killed. From anything else but siege weapons. What do you guys think? I think it's gonna be very difficult for Isengard player to take it down. But he's gonna have the dragon strike, you know, available soon. He can use it on the fortress. That's gonna deal, you know, a decent amount of damage. You can kill the expansions again, and then you can potentially group for a big push and finish the game. Indeed, he was, you know, over time again building some more production buildings. He has now two Uruk pits up on the field again. The armory didn't get killed once so far. Um, he has still enough money to keep making units, obviously. And Mordo can't do that because the army from Isengard is around this area. So he doesn't have the time to build more production buildings. And his command points are dropping as he is losing the last slaughterhouse up on the field. I think he's saving for a hero. <laughs> Only fortress left and one lumber mill. That's all the units he got. 22 command points from these lumber mill workers. Oh no. Don't do them. They're family. Don't do that to them. Okay, Saruman is almost level 10. He's level 9, by the way, boys. Catapult expansion. Okay, never mind. He has actually two Aradrim archers here. So 14, 12 <laughs> command points available. But Gorgor of Spire Fireball, Fireball is ready. And we have a Fell Beast. Okay. And actually, not a bad idea because he has no archers on the field anymore. <laughs> so there is nothing that can deal with this Fell Beast at this, at this point. Um... It looks like he also didn't revive his Lourdes. Lourdes is dead now for a while, if I'm not mistaken. So he has actually only Saruman. Like, you know, zero here. Oh, he, he's actually sending them to the fortress. After seeing the Felbies. So he gets some money. You can always do that, by the way. If you are, you know, running out of command points. If you have wrong units on the field you don't want to feed your opponent with. 
you can do that what he just did click them right click them on the fortress sell them kinda and you get some money from that crossbowmen are coming now from these two Uruk, uh, Uruk pits he's gonna upgrade them with fire upgrade um you know i think saruman has to be close by to those crossbowmen now because again saruman's fear resistant is gonna make this screech completely useless if he's nervy, uh, you know, if he's near to those crossbowmen. Double siege works gonna make some ballistas, because what I said before is kinda true. He can't take down the fortress without siege weapons. This fortress is perfectly protected. Even though those Gatewatcher expansions, they are, they are not doing anything. So you can just sell them and make some body kit expansions instead. Because they're gonna be useless. Okay, Lourdes is back in the business. He's level almost 10 as well. He has pillage. Look the power points from Mordor. He has 15 power points. Uh, the Reign of Fire is ready, and the Gorgoroth Fireball is gonna be ready as well. <laughs> so I think he's gonna be able to defend like two or three more attacks with that, with that being said. But can he get back into the game? He has no more money. He has a Fell Beast getting dismounted um, from this Fell Beast. I mean, it's like a, it's like Kamul now, right? Two Haradrim Arches for the win, no banner carry upgrade, uh, because no more Orc Pits. Uh, you need always those Armory uh, things. Okay, he's gonna... Reveal Reign of Fire will be used where there we go on these uh, siege, siege weapons. But he was able to get one ballista already. The build has been taken down as well to Reign of Fire. He has also a barrage ability, <laughs> which is something similar to the Gorgoro Fireball. And I think Mr. Piggy is very patient person because he has to deal with that for such a long time. But you need to be patient sometimes to win those games. Gorgoroth's Fireball is incoming, boys. The Magma is coming in clutch. The Felbis is here. Okay. Barrage is coming. Where did he use that Gorgoroth's Fire Fireball, by the way? I didn't see that. He was using it kind of on his own. Um, nothing left again to kill this. Okay. Fireball is incoming. But wasn't able to... You can't use it on top of your fortress. That's not possible, by the way. That has a limited range. And also minimal range, if this makes sense. So you can't use it right on your on your own fortress. I think that's not possible. Okay, the Felbis has been taken down. And it was the eye of Sauron how it gets killed. But look, this magma. This magma is doing such a great work. Lurch can just put on the swords now. Sauron, using Warchant here, why not? <laughs> was Warchant from Mortal Player, by the way. And the fortress will be taken down after a fantastic and entertainment entertaining game. I think it was a great game. You know. We have seen Muma kills, we have seen Drama Trolls, we have seen Lord Saruman, we have seen Valbis, we have seen Reign of Fire, Dragon Strike, Dragon Summon from Isengard. Crazy game. And if this was funny for you to watch, guys, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And if, you know, this is your first time on my channel, please consider subscribing as well. And again, check me out on my Twitch channel, boys. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is gonna be in the description below. Soon we're gonna start with the World Championship for Rise of the Witch King with a cash prize of $500. I would love to. And I'm looking forward to see you guys in the chat. Take care of yourself, stay healthy, and as always, also Beyond Standards. Peace, guys.